All right, we're now ready to talk about excitation tables. Right? In the first two parts of this video series, we created a state diagram and then a state transition table for a finite state machine that detects the, se uh, the sequence 110. What we want to do now is go through how we then create how we use what are ex called excitation tables, then to determine the equations for different flip-flops. So we're going to actually, this is going to go through how those excitation tables are developed. Right. So an excitation table shows the minimum inputs that are necessary to generate a particular next state when the current state is known. Right. In other words, what kind of circuitry do we need to attach to the input of the flip-flop to derive the next state value? And so we're taking a look here for the D flip flop. Right. This excitation table shows that when the present state is zero. So here, what we have in the excitation tables is we show the present state, the next state, and then what we're doing is we're going to derive what the value of D should be. We do that using the characteristic equation. So the D flip flop characteristic equation is Q in the next state is equal to D, which makes this D excitation table really easy to derive. We say, well, when the present state is Q, I'm sorry, when the present state is zero and the next state is zero, what should the D input be? Well, since Q next is equal to D, D is going to be whatever is sitting here on Q next, right? So D will be a zero. When our present state is zero, but our next state needs to be a one, that means the input sitting there on D needs to be a one. When the present state is a one, and the next state is a zero. Well, we want the next state to be a zero, so D must be a zero. When the present state is a one, but the next state needs to be a one, the input sitting there on D needs to be a one. If we were to treat the present state and the next state as inputs to a truth table and D as the output to the truth table, we could derive an equation for that. And Simply, that equation that we derived before we go into JK in the next slide, sorry, right, is simply D is equal to Q next. Q next equal to D, right? These two are equivalent. So for a D flip-flop, we don't really have to drive any external circuitry. Right? And we'll see that when we actually then create the circuits for the finite state machine. So as far as excitation tables go for D flip-flops, well, the value of D has to be the same as Q next. Now let's take a look at JK. All right, the JK excitation table. We go back to the JK flip-flop characteristic equation of Q in the next state is equal to J and with Q naught, so this is Q in the present state, or with K naught and it was Q in the present state. And so in order to fill in these excitation tables, we're going to use this characteristic equation, right? We're going to say then here, what we're trying to do is we've got, if you think about, even though this is said input J and input K, these are the two values we're trying to derive. Right. And what we do is we say, when we have Q in the present state is a zero and Q in the next state is a zero, what must the values of J and K be? Right. So this is what the slide is showing you up here. When Q equals zero and Q plus Q in the next state equals zero, there is no change in the next state from the present state. Right. What we can do then right, is we're going to substitute the value of Q and Q next into this characteristic equation. So Q naught, right, so when Q is a zero, right, here's where I put the zero in here, we're showing the naught. Q plus, so here's Q plus, this zero is going here, and then Q, this zero is going here. Right, and we want to derive what J and K have to be, right? So here, this is saying zero is equal to J and it was zero not, or with K not and with zero. Well, we're going to then change then zero not is the same as one. So we read this as J is equal to, zero is equal to J and it was one, or with K not and it was zero. Well, using Boolean algebra, right, Anything and it was zero is going to produce a zero. Anything and it was one, so x and it was one is x, so j and it was one is j. So this comes down to the Boolean expression here, algebraic expression, that j must be equal to zero, which is where this input of j comes from. 
here we have a don't care for k because since zero is ended with k does it really matter whether k is a one or a zero in this case it does not that's why we have the don't care right so we'd say then when q in the present say zero and q in the next state has to be a zero the input sitting there on j that value that's being input the j has to be a zero we don't care what k is let's go on with our next case right. so our next case is is when q in the present state is a zero and q in the next state is a one. Notice we're going through all the binary combinations, zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one. So when q is equal to zero and q in the next state is equal to one, right, there's a change in the next state from the present state, right? There's a change. What we're doing is we're substituting into the equation, right? q plus q next is a one that's going to go in here. So that's where this comes from. This one is q next. These are the values of q, right? So the q is zero, so we've got zero and up. We've got zero here for the value of q, and we start now evaluating this. Well, we know that, right, k not ended with zero produces a zero. Then zero and not is a one, j ended with one gives us a one. We come down to then j must be equal to one here using our Boolean algebra theorems. So once again, then our input, j is a one. We don't care what k is. k can be a zero or a one because it completely drops out of the equation. That's why we say k is a don't care. Doesn't matter what its value is when we're adding it with a zero because of the characteristic equation of this flip-flop, it won't matter what k is. All right, let's go on now for the next combination. The next combination is q in the present state is a one, q in the next state is a zero. So q is a one, q plus is a zero. We substitute then the zero here for q plus, the one here for q, right? One naught is a zero. We can say then we get this form that zero is equal to j and it was zero. Well, we know this is going to evaluate to a zero. k naught and it was one will be k naught. We have the expression that zero is equal to k naught. Well, in order for k not to produce a zero, k must be equal to one, right? The inverse of one is a zero. The input j, we don't care what it is because it's dropped out of the equation. Finally, then our fourth combination is q in the present states of one, q in the next states of one. So q in the present states of one, q in the next states of one. We'll substitute this q next state value of one here. This value of q is substituted here and here into the characteristic equation. So one naught becomes a zero. So we have j ended with zero. Well, we know that gives us a zero. k naught ended with one gives us k naught. We have the equation that k naught is equal to one. Well, k must then be a zero because zero naught is a one. And once again, we don't care what the value of j is. Right. And so now our excitation table for our J flip-flop looks like this, right? Based on the characteristic equation, we derive that when Q in the present state is a zero and Q in the next state is a zero, J must be a zero. We don't care what K is. When Q in the present state is a zero, Q in the next state is a one, J must be a one. We don't care what K is. Likewise, when q in the present state is a one, q in the next state is a zero, we don't care what j is, but k must be a one. Finally, when q present is a one, q next is a one, we don't care about j, but k must be a zero. All right, there's the jk excitation table. We will next develop the t flip-flop excitation table, and then we, in the next lecture, we'll see how, to, how we use these tables. So for the T flip-flop, right, we use the characteristic equation. That was Q next is equal to T, and it with Q naught, or with T naught, and it with Q. And we do the same thing again. We're going to go through then the four binary combinations of Q in the present state and Q in the next state. So when Q in the present state is zero and Q in the next state is zero, right, we're going to substitute into this equation. So this zero here, there's your Q next. This zero and this zero, here's your values of Q. All right, so zero naught becomes a one. We can say T end with one or with T not end with zero. When we know anything end with zero produces a zero. We know that T end with one produces a T. 
we get this equation, which then finally reduces down to t is a zero. In other words, right, when q in the present state and q in the next state are the same, we want to hold state. Remember the toggle flip-flop? Whenever t is a zero, we hold state, right? The state doesn't change. And that was our behavior. We said in words should be defined. We define it with an equation, and they both hold true and are consistent. So t is a zero. That makes logical sense to us because we don't toggle from one state to the next, t must be a zero. Right. Similarly, now, when q in the present state is a zero and q in the next state is a one, we have a change in state, which we would expect t to toggle, but let's substitute into the equation. So here, this one for q next comes in here, the zero for the q's come in here. All right, we end up with t and with one, because zero not to one, t not ended with zero. Well, this produces a zero, this produces t, t ordered with zero is t, this says t equals one. So once again, we're toggling, right? We're changing present to next, so t must be a one in order to toggle. Similarly here, when q in the present state's a one, q in the next state's a zero, we're going to change from one to zero. We would expect t to be a one, we substitute into the equation, so here's our value of q next. Here's our two values of q, right? One not becomes zero. T ended with zero gives us a zero. T not ended with one gives us t not. We say zero is equal to t not. Well, t must then be a one because one not is equal to zero. Finally, right, the last entry, when q in the present and q in the next are the same, they're both ones, we'll substitute into the equation. Right? We get one not to zero. We have t end of a zero gives us a zero, t not end of one gives us a t not. So one is equal to t not. Well, in order to get a t must be a zero because zero not will be a one, All right? Which makes sense because when we don't want to change, when we want to hold state, we said that our toggle t should be a zero. Right. That is the end of our excitation tables. All right, here's the summary table that we just derived for t. You'll want to put these in your notes right, to have handy when you actually have to then derive flip-flop state equations. So what we'll do in the next lecture is we'll derive the flip-flop state equations for the D flip-flop. Like I said, write down these excitation tables, keep them in your notes. You will need them for homework and for test questions. <laughs>